Hello, everyone. Thank you for checking out this special episode of Really Dicey. This is Manny, and I'm here with... James Drucker as an interviewee this time. And I'm Alex Galat, and I live in Maine. Excellent. And um, today we're going to talk about Grindhouse, um, Volume 4. Um, so let's start Let's start with the, at the beginning. What is the Grindhouse series exactly? Well, well, Grindhouse in general is basically a, it's a style of, of movie that was popularized during the 1970s particularly. But it's really stretched from, you know, sometime in the 60s to early 80s. And uh, a Grindhouse was basically a theater that would, that would just sort of literally grind out movies that, you know, like three in a row, that sort of thing. And they would just sort of run these throughout the day. Um, but they just wanted to get people in the theater. And so they would make these really low budget exploitation films, you know, that were basically had, you know, a handful of, of inexperienced actors, uh, 50 gallons of blood and a, cri and, and a weird title to go with them. <laughs> and, and that describes, <laughs> and a lot of heart. Maybe, maybe, that describes maybe half of, of all Grindhouse movies. But uh, yeah, they, they were they were sort of meant to 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 shock and and you know a lot of them had these these you know uh, gimmicks like they would give out barf bags with when people went in because you know or you know warning if you have heart conditions don't come in to watch this movie that sort of thing. Um, the the ones people are most familiar with today would be like Texas Chainsaw Massacre, uh, The Hills Have Eyes, um, Race with well, the Devil. There was um, or, or Tarantino yeah, and um, Rodriguez did a. Uh... A, a, a double feature film, uh, yes. Grand House. Yeah, the, and the, yeah, they really uh, sort of brought it back into the, in, in, into into the vogue. But I, but I I grew up watching those on VHS, you know, those older movies and, and so forth. So mm -hmm. that's that's what that's what that was my first sort of experience with cinematic horror, at least. And Alex, you are the creator of the series. Yeah, basically, um, the, I, I have uh, others who write. Um, most of, most of the earlier ones were were collaboration between myself and Ian Christensen, and then uh, um, my more recent one I collaborated with uh, with James. Are these a series of adventures contained in each each book? Um, dealing yeah, with each, that, each book has two, yeah. I was gonna say each book has two scenarios. Uh, it's it's sort of it's sort of uh, presented as a double feature. You know, kind of getting into the whole uh, idea of the grindhouse. And they're sort of meant to be effectively one shots. Um, you know, they could they could be dragged out tomorrow, but basically they're intended just for a quick, uh, you know, down and dirty, um, uh, you know, you know, scenario type of thing. And and uh, you know, like I described on the back of the book, you you know, this isn't you know people sipping tea in a in a in a wood panel library, you know, looking through old books. You know, this this is, this is about an investigator like you know limping down an alley on a on a busted ankle with uh, mutants trying to beat him to death with the limbs of his dead friends. Um, you know, it's, it's a dumpster fire and it's, and that's, that's kind of the point of it. Um, you know, they're meant, they're, they're sort of just meant to be gritty and, and um, uh, just this messy, I guess is probably the best way to look at it. What, what system is this for? Not oh, sorry. Uh, yeah. It's, I should, you should, should mention that it's, it's for Call of Cthulhu. Uh, I, I published what well, we published through the Miskatonic Repository, uh, which is their sort of outlet on Drive Through RPG, and um, Chaosium is 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 very very supportive of, of their community content. You know they they're always, they always go out of their way to help, you know promote our stuff to encourage us to do more. They have a mm -hmm. a, a great uh, outreach program with you know with people who are you know will help you out if you're you know looking to do things and. Uh, yeah, I, I, can't, I can't praise Chaosium enough for how much they support the, the you know the little, the little creators. <laughs> yeah, and make themselves available. It's it's kind of yeah. surprising how how easy it is to contact even some of the more uh, higher up people in Chaosium about issues and questions. So, yeah, yeah, Chaosium always had a really friendly uh, support team for especially for for uh, not just uh, writers, but also too for fans of the system as well. Mm -hmm. um so uh, it sounds like these there there are two stories two one shots uh mm -hmm. in this in this book uh so let's let's talk a little bit about that i'll start with you james um so uh, nazi bikers must die i i love the title you know it reminds me of some of the 
you know, we were, you mentioned about Grindhouse, and I, I grew up watching a lot of those those flicks growing up, you know, and uh, they were always, I think I love the trailers. The trailers were always <laughs> the bizarre, some bizarre stuff, yeah. really creative. Oh, yeah. But 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 I, I love the title. It's very 70s. Um, yeah. what, uh, uh, what, what tell us about the story what 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 can pe- what can someone expect well uh you can expect to kill nazis uh <laughs> to begin with <laughs> uh, or night nazi bikers that's kind of like, like i put a, I put a warning at the beginning of it saying you know and it, if you have any issues with killing nazis this probably is your scenario um uh, it, 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 basically when i first uh, approached alex about it i just i i, I sort of pitched the idea of of, well, have you done anything with bikers yet? And he's like, well, no, not really. And it sort of got the impression he's kind of like, why well, haven't I done anything with bikers yet? And I'm like, okay, have you done anything with Nazis yet? And he's like, well, no, not really. And I kind of got the impression that he was thinking, why haven't I done anything with Nazis yet? <laughs> so I think it was kind of a, a, a slam dunk kind of proposal. Um, and uh, yeah, you, you play this, uh, you play bikers. The, the, sorry, the, uh, the players play bikers. Um, and they're they're kind of bad guys, but not like Nazi bad guys. And uh, it's one of the things Alex kind of like right from the get go was the idea of bad guys versus worse guys. So yeah. you're you're already kind of um, notorious because you're a you're you're a band of bikers going into this town to 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 locate this this particular object and and remove it however you need to, um, and then you know th- throw in a a healthy dosage of, of Nazi bikers and, you know, and some mythos issues and things go awry and, you know, there's, there's bloody guts being thrown everywhere and, uh, and, and lots of fun. I mean, I don't want to give away too much, obviously, but, uh, <laughs> but yeah, uh, it, it was, it was, it was, it was a joy to write it. Um, just cause it's, it's like the whole grindhouse thing, uh, and cinematic feel is kind of really right up my alley with the the type of stuff I really enjoy doing. I like a little bit more action. I like I like things being a little more dynamic. Though at the same time, oddly enough, this this is a scenario where I actually do a little more investigation than I normally do. Um, but uh, <laughs> but that being said, there's still a lot of the the, the grindhouse um, uh, wonderful silliness in it as well. Hmm. And, and I assume that, like most, like uh, Call of Cthulhu source books and adventures, there's probably like maps, uh, a lot of like uh, handouts and clues you probably give to players. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Are there are there um um what you call it uh, uh pre pre generated characters or anything like that? Yes. Uh, I, I think it's it's a lot easier to create some of these things sometimes with a pre generated character because um, then you can you can definitely focus exactly the, the skills and stuff you're expecting these the players to have access to and you can also build kind of narratives like that are ingrained into the story already by by making those and, and it's just kind of fun I, mean, I had an idea a long long time ago to create a character that was called major tom and that's one of our <laughs> bikers essentially he's kind of the de facto leader um and major tom that's not his real name he has some backstory that I won't give it away, but he has a backstory where he now goes by the name Major Tom. But he doesn't go by Tom, and he doesn't go by Major. He goes by Major Tom. And if anybody tries to sing the song, he'll usually punch them in the face. So, um, <laughs> and, and, there's, and there are, there are other assortment of, uh, of, of pre-gens that all have their own personalities and, and skills that, that bring to the table. Um, but they're all bikers, and they're all, they're all a little bit notorious. Um, but interesting at the same time i mean one was an ex-rabbi um or went to uh, uh yeshiva Rebecca but didn't Slam. quite finish out yeah so um uh, just as an example so the the, the backgrounds are, are interesting and varied and and have fun um with it so uh i, I i'm quite i'm quite pleased with with the uh with with the pre-gens there i think they're a lot of fun and and that to me would be the the, the optimal way to play this scenario was using those uh, using those pregens. What and mm-hmm. I I think too the 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 the, the importance of putting pregens in, in in scenarios like this is these are the kind of scenarios that really fit in easily into a cam into a pre existing campaign. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean the, these two probably more so than others for for various reasons, but 
Uh, but generally speaking, you know, you 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 know, it, it's meant to be sort of a one shot, and so you go, you know, it's some something a bunch of people can pick up. You know, uh, you know, you get the pre gens in there, you can just sit down and just start playing. You know, right yeah. then, and uh, and and finish it up. You know, have fun. Uh, you know, blow things up. You know, yeah. kill people, get chased by uh, cultists. You know, the usual. And horrible monsters. I, <laughs> perfect for perfect for convention play. I think these these kinds of scenarios. Mm. And when when you're yeah. making stuff that people want to use for conventions, at having pre gens is almost a requirement. So. Mm. So. So, uh, cold as hell. Um, uh, let's talk about that story now. Um, so, uh, again, I love the title. Very, very blunt. <laughs> um, what, what can you, what can you uh, tell us about about uh, your story without giving too much away? Well, it, it takes place in the uh, in Massachusetts on the coldest night of the year. Uh, it's it's you know well into the negative double digits, and um, and it takes place in in the in the fabled town of Dunwich, Massachusetts made famous by the great Dunwich horror of the 19, 1929, um, which has, has sort of faded, almost faded into memory at this point, because, you know, the people who weren't there don't necessarily believe it. You know, uh, police reports weren't filed. Or, you know, it became just sort of, a, sort of a, a, a legend almost. Um, but the events of this don't necessarily revolve around that. Those series of events, it's just sort of background. Um, but it, like uh, like the like the best bits in in um, Nazi bikers must die. Uh, it the best part bits take place in a in a bar. <laughs> in mm. this case, the Wayward Inn, which mm -hmm. is a uh, which is a a bar I mentioned in a in a previous scenario, uh, Carnival of Madness, and uh, so I kind of wanted to call that back a little bit. But um, uh, yeah, and. and there are these couriers who have been hired to pick up a, a uh, an artifact that was inadvertently uncovered in the basement during renovations, and they are meant to take it to Miskatonic uh, uni uh, uh, University um, as soon as possible uh, due, the, due to the sensitive nature of it, that sort of thing. And um, it turns out there are others who are eager to get their hands on it uh, for various reasons. And again, without spoiling anything... Um, but it becomes it's it, but it's it's definitely very sort of sort of siege uh, 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 siege like where they're you know the good guys are inside the bad guys are outside and they're trying to um, you know keep this out of their hands. Hmm. Uh, nice. What can you tell us about the uh, pre? Do you have pre generate? Oh, yeah, you also yeah, have um, pre generate. Wow, I can't say yeah, right so, now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, Sure. Yeah. The, so the, the pre gens for mine are um, they they are professional couriers and they do a lot of a courier work for other uh, other sources, but they do specialize in in uh, mythos related um, you know books and um, artifacts and, and so forth. And they've developed a good reputation for it. And so these are, these they're very expensive, but these are the people you hire when you when you absolutely need something to get someplace quickly and safely and especially if this risk of someone else being after it um uh both of these actually sort of tie into this uh, um this sort of other organization that, that that we're in the process of creating which is like a uh it's an underground sort of black market of of mythos um items and uh you know so in in both cases, these 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 couriers in both scenarios are are somehow connected to this, and so we're um, uh, we're slowly sort of building this mythology <laughs> as 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 we go, and um, you know taking notes and writing things down, keeping information, and uh, you know more of that will come out as as future uh, oh, volumes yeah. come out. So let's talk about the 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 artwork. Uh, where where did you guys go for artwork for inspiration and so forth? I do I do um I do well for the most part I do most of my own artwork, um, uh, and uh, um most of it's digital. I do uh, um, I do a lot of my my illustration in Photoshop or you know sampling you know uh, public domain images and and um. 
you know, photo bashing. There's there's there's, there's a lot of different techniques I use to to, to create the the artwork for uh, for the scenarios um, or, or the covers. <laughs> um, I mean, at some point, I, I I do I do I I do plan to get more into you know hiring other artists, but uh, but it's expensive, and yeah. so I, I, I you know as, as long as I can manage to do it myself, um, you know I've I've hired a few here and there for for various you know other other projects, but uh, um, and the thing but the thing about the grindhouse too is it's sort of meant to be, um, it I don't want to say cheap, but it's definitely meant to be like lean, you know unpolished. Lean. Yeah, lean and unpolished, right? Yeah, it, it, just like the original Grindhouse movies, right? Yeah. People love them, but you know there wasn't a lot put into them necessarily. As far as like, uh, uh, they're not, they're not going to be Oscar nominated. Yeah, um, <laughs> I think you do yourself a disservice a little bit by saying <laughs> unpolished because you're, because your photo bashing and your and your and your 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 uh, your, your Photoshop work looks good i mean i i, I oh sure comes to mind, yeah comes to mind the uh, the character larry the boot and you you did an original version <laughs> of him for me and i'm yeah, like yeah. oh but i describe him in the book and he has a big red mustache and you're like give me a minute and and, and there'll probably yeah. be a picture of it i, I think i think, right well, I think it was literally, um, literally less than five minutes yeah before I, exactly I and, it's like, and it looks and it looks really good <laughs> and it's like because when i describe it in the book um i basically described yosemite sam um, yeah. as a real person and it's like so that's the kind of mustache I'm looking at and so like I said he goes away five minutes comes back with a picture it's like okay that's perfect that's exactly what I need so mm -hmm. um, I, it, it's it, it's it's very perfunctory it's exactly what it needs to be in these yeah. in, in these uh, these scenarios yeah and 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 we're sort of, because because I try to keep them small we're sort of limited this is actually one of the larger um, grindhouse books uh, of the of the smaller format ones that uh that, are, that we've done so um higher but page even count. so yeah relatively speaking um but but both scenarios are still one shots they're still runnable in a single session um they they, they come with they come with maps they come with pre-gens like we said yeah. um and if, if, uh, if i may you said larger how how big is this uh how big is volume four Oh, well, it's pages? it's it it's. I think what is it, seventy six pages? I yeah, want to say just over seventy five pages. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but the but the format we I'm using for these grindhouse books is uh, six by nine. Um, when I originally thought of doing these, I was like, you know what, I, it doesn't feel like it doesn't feel like to have a grindhouse like in a, in a in a in a full book. <laughs> you know, it's like. They, 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 <laughs> And and I want something that kind of reminded me more of like uh, you know the the old dime novels, you mm -hmm. know that was sort of you know and and this this is very much like that where you know it's a just a smaller format it's cheaper, um, mm -hmm. you know th this is uh, even this one which is seventy six pages with with everything in it is still you know it's it's under seven dollars mm -hmm. um, for two scenarios, <laughs> which is which is uh, you know is 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 still a pretty good deal. Yeah. Um, yes. Which you can find at Drive to RPG. Uh, I'll yeah. put a link in the uh, description you. below. Um, <laughs> Thank you. Um, so, so what is what is next? So, this is volume four. I assume this is mm -hmm. not the last volume. Is there works for Hopefully volume not. five of sorts? <laughs> well, it, we've, we've got plans. I, you know, I, I have a, I have a ton. I I have I have like one Google Doc that I have just a whole bunch of just the grindhouse ideas. Like, I, so I get an idea and I I, I put a headline and I. And I Write some notes under it, and I and it, I put it there to sort of compost, and you know, so I have a whole list of them that I can, that I can sort of choose from, like good choice like, of words, like, like like there's there's one that I was working on, um, it, it kind of kind of a, a, a not very spoilery, but it's uh, uh, it's called Cannibal Nuns Two, um, Bad Habits, oh. and um, uh, but there's not going to be a Cannibal Nuns One, this, I'm just not going to make oh. one. It'll only Personal. be the Cannibal Nuns too, because one was lost to something in a fire or whatever. We don't know, but they, <laughs> the first movie will never be seen. Only the uh, second. Yeah, <laughs> gotta be meta. Well, I mean, in the same vein, I have I have sequel bait at the end of my scenario, and I don't know if it'll ever be a sequel to it. But <laughs> right. it's it's it sort of leans into that whole kind of you know film kind of concept with it. Yeah, and, and that's the other big thing too. Besides the grindhouse aesthetic, um, uh, 
even 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 my non grindhouse stuff, I, I definitely lean towards a more cinematic style of of scenario because um, I mean that that's where most people get their entertainment these days, right? They watch movies, they watch you know television, they watch uh, you know uh, streaming services or whatever. But you're you're getting a very sort of visual um, structure that we're all used to, and I think. Mm-hmm. You know, I think the games sort of have to, ref- you know, they don't have to, but the- it can help when the when when the when the the game you're playing reflects that, you know. So you yeah. f- you actually step you know step into it and you feel like you're in a movie, you know. Well, it's, Espe- when I first started, games. yeah, when I first started GMing, uh, like I, I used to be a filmmaker and I was a mm-hmm. huge fan of movies, and I always felt that when I'm when I was running games, I wanted it to feel like like a movie and have the, the pacing mm-hmm. of a movie. Um, yeah. And so that's sort of just when I started writing scenarios, just sort of uh, very, you know, naturally flowed into that, continuing that. I want to, I want to have that kind of movie feel. Um, one of my last scenarios I wrote for the Sons of Singularity called the fate of the cow. Um, it's very cinematic in that they're taking a lot of inspiration from things like jaws and other mm-hmm. things. So it's, it, it's, it, it, and it's very, non-investigative it's more it it, it, it's if you put a a a particular lacquer of paint over it it would fit right in with kind of the grindhouse um kind of mentality feel um with it so um i i I agree completely about the the whole idea of uh, i mean it's to me it's it's almost like writing a screenplay right because Mm -hmm. what you you know if you if you write a screenplay you give you get you give it to other people to make. So now you have the director who's the keeper, and you have the the, the players who are the yeah. actors, and and they do something unique with it. And that's why I, yeah. I even love uh, when I see one of my scenarios being played in a live play or something like that. I really want to. I'm excited. You know, you know, I want to hear what they did. You know? Yeah, yeah. And and some people have done some really cool things, like Highway of Blood. Uh, one group played it where they were they were professional wrestlers, <laughs> like oh, nice. <laughs> <laughs> you know, on, on, they were on their way to California, and and uh, yeah, I mean, it, it went as you'd imagine. <laughs> yeah, well, I think peppering, like when I was writing um, uh, "Nazi Bikers Must Die," uh, I wanted to pepper in as many opportunities for people to do cool things as possible, mm-hmm. uh, and and a lot of them are just yeah. kind of just vaguely thrown mm-hmm. in, and and here's here's a here's a here's a seed for an idea of something that somebody might do. Let's hope they go with it. Yeah. One of my yeah. favorites is uh, something I've called um, um, Chekhov's swordfish. In my uh, <laughs> now, now anybody who's literally minded understands the idea of Chekhov's gun. If you present a gun at the beginning of the play, that means it has to be used by the end of the, the, yeah. the play. Um, and I have I, I just dropped a swordfish very plainly described in the middle of the scenario, and I really, really hope that at some point some of the players decide to use the swordfish as an impromptu weapon because that's friggin' awesome. <laughs> I, I, I want to hear people do really cool stuff in the scenarios. Yeah. So. And and with that in mind, we, I, I, we, uh, we also tend to give people uh, the, the pre-gens uh, their, their own little uh, kind of a little talent they can do or, or a, sk- a special skill or something like that. It's 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 almost like a little superpower, but it's they're, they're not you know they're not really super, like uh, you know um, trying to think of a, a good example. Uh, well, in some cases they are super. In 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 in, uh, in mine, one one of the uh, characters has uh, has uh, can touch things and get impressions from them, you know. So there's there you know they they might be something like that, but in other cases Ooh. it just might be, you know, um, you can you can you know you have you can, you have the ability to sort of catch things in midair. You know, yeah. that are thrown at you. You know that sort of thing. Movie it's, physics, right? Right, exactly. It, 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 and again, it goes to what you were saying, uh, James, which is basically, you know, it, it can it just makes them a little bit cooler. You know, they're not mm-hmm. they're not just you know regular characters; they're yeah. cool characters. <laughs> you know, they're, <laughs> they're the ones which is which is a big part of the the grindhouse aesthetic as well. Yeah, so. yeah. Mm. Um, and and whenever whenever possible, we try to make them. Um, gender neutral so that whoever plays can can sort of skin them <laughs> yeah i guess that's yeah. grand house yeah skin them <laughs> um <laughs> however they like <laughs> i was going to retract that but i thought no i, I don't really need to do it um <laughs> uh, yeah Just so they, with it. 
but but they, you know, and and they're kept sort of deliberately simple. You know, mm-hmm. they're 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 very sort of pared down. They look like they've been made in someone's uh, in someone's uh, back den with an old typewriter. You know, that sort of thing, which is kind of what they're meant to sort of thing. Because that's those are my first characters when I was when I was growing up. I, <laughs> my first D and D character sheet was literally made on a on a typewriter on a on a little six by nine piece of piece of paper. You know, so yeah. um, switching between the red and the black ink. So yeah, it's it's uh, it has it has its own look. It's great. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, and I think the when especially when you're making pregens as well, the the characters themselves shouldn't be too complex because you want people to understand them right off the bat. And and really, yeah. it's like when you're talking about grindhouse movie characters as well, they're not usually filled with complex pathos. Usually, it's it's, <laughs> it's pretty simple. It's like, oh, I hate Nazis, so I'm going to beat them on the head right. with my stick. <laughs> it's it's pretty simple. Um, yeah. Nothing wrong with that, and it gives it gives players a chance to bring their own uh, right. complexities to the character. Yeah. Hmm. Well, th- this sounds fantastic. Um, is there any last words you want to say about this project before we wrap up? Buy it. Uh, buy it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, I mean, so, it, it, or, I would say or I would say give it, you know, yeah, I would say I would say if if you if you really like those, those kind of movies and you like that, that kind of more action, uh, you know, uh, action packed, um, style, um, and you're not afraid to die, then, then, then this would work for you <laughs> because there's a, there's, there's a, there's a, a better than average chance. You're not going to survive, but if you do, you're going to have a hell of a story to tell. Oh, yes. <laughs> uh, what about you, James? Any, any last words? Um, it's pretty much the same thing, you know. I want I, I want people to play it and have fun with it, and then tell their friends how much fun it was, and not not in, in so much as to say, "Oh, tell your friends so they'll buy it." But I, I I love it when there's when 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 a when a game session becomes that story, you know, yeah. where where you've you played something, and it's, it's it's like for years to come, your your gaming group that you play with regularly, you. Every once in a while, you guys will sit down and you'll have those memory, you know, nights. It's, oh, do you remember when we played the, the the Nazi one from Grindhouse? Oh, you remember when when Bill did this thing and those? I love those stories. And and my biggest hope is that I can help create some of those stories for some mm-hmm. gaming groups. And and I and personally, maybe it's a bit of humorous. I don't know. I I'd love to hear people tell those stories and I'd like to find out how they had fun with with what I helped to create. So. Hmm. All right, excellent. Well, um, again, there will be a link in the description below. Uh, Grindhouse Volume Four: a Drive to RPG. Um, yes, thank you everyone for watching. Um, thank you both for being part of this, thank and um, stay safe, everyone. We'll see you next time. <laughs>